Hi, Caesar here with another video, and today we are going to tackle a popular request from you guys. We're going to talk about damage shifting and just different tanks, etc. I'll probably only cover a few things in this video as it's a very large topic, but if you like it, I can do more videos like this and talk about different ways to tank and how they work and increase your character's life. Now, you might see a lot of people this see wearing items like Lightning Coil. You might see a lot of streamers playing around with the taste they hate, if they have one, etc. And you'll see a lot of things like percentage fizz taken as fire, as a craft on a helmet or an unveil, and uh, another modifier with the physical damage from hits taken as cold, etc. or lightning, whatever. And this is not super obvious to new players why this is a good stat. And I wanted to talk about damage shifting and why it's good and why we use it. So, this character has um, some armor actually. So if I especially put on all my flasks and I, I have determination, so I have 15,000 armor in my hideout and when I have my flask up, I have 81% physical damage reduction, right? And 90% and is the damage cap. You can't go over 90. So what's the point in, in me wearing things like lightning coil? I'm already almost at the damage cap. Or am I? Are you looking for a new PC over the holidays to play your favorite game? Get up to $100 off on a brand new computer between the 18th of December to 31st of December. If you're looking for a new PC, the Horizon line offers a great PC for the everyday gamer. Then you have the Voyager line for content creators and people really looking for a top of the line PC. And as you can see by their logo, these PCs are rock solid and nobody wants a soft present for Christmas. If you're looking for a pre-built PCs, I'm using one myself. They've been really great so far. Can't go wrong with this one. Give yourself an edge for the upcoming year of game releases by heading over to StarforgeSystems.com and grab one of the best PCs in the universe. So the way armor works is that, and I'll read, and this is from Extremish My Armor in my chat. It gets brought up so much because it's very, it's, it lies to you. And Armor does not actually grant the percentage to physical damage that the tooltip states. There is a hidden mechanic where armor only grants at most 10% of the armor reduction in physical damage. So 25,000 armor will ever mitigate 2,500 HP. And I can't remember if my command is old or not, but that's not super important. They did buff it at some point, so it could even be double that. But armor is predominantly good at small hits. And, and um, that means that if you're taking a boss slam, for let's say like 70,000 damage, then you're not going to be mitigating most of that. So let's open POB a little bit and uh, and look at different forms of uh, mitigation. So if I'm not wearing a lightning coil right now and I'm not gonna like activate the like unique being in your presence. So what we wanna look at now is this, max hit taken physical 14,000. Um, this might not necessarily be true. Same with, um, our, um, and, and same with like, everything here. So what we're going to do now is first we're going to assume a max hit of 100. First we're going to assume a max hit of 500. And you can see that already by a max hit of 500, our damage reduction is going from 90 to uh, 84. Now, uh, what if we go a damage hit of 2000? Now we're down to a fist damage reduction of 57%. What if we're taking a big boss slam? So let's look a little bit at uh, Shaper. We can actually do that here. Is enemy a boss? Guardian pinnacle boss. Boss skill set damage. How much does that do? Here. So, boom. So, a shaper slam, which is pretty much the largest hit in the game. The only thing that's higher is uber shaper. It's 13,710. So, that's a large slam that we actually can take. Now, for this, we only have 18% physical damage reduction. And that, I believe, is including my helmet. So, we absolutely die here. Um, so if we look here now, and we can see here, it's taken before death, 0 0.84. That means that to a normal Shaper Slam, I die. And if I then make this a Uber, I am very, very dead. I can't even tank um, half of a hit. So these screens are very, very important to look at. A lot of people will look at um, just these things here, but there's a very important thing that people forget. And we're actually walking into that trap right now, and you didn't even know it. So if we look here right now, Molten Shell is enabled. Now we're even more dead. Because this is on by default in POB. So that means that we can tank 0.3 of a Uber Slam. And of a normal Slam, we can tank 0.57 without Molten Shell. 
Now let's click on a lightning coil and see what happens. Now we can actually survive it, even without Molten Shell. And this is without Flask up. So we went from thinking we were going to survive with uh, maybe Molten Shell up and maybe being okay, to we're definitely going to survive with a lightning coil. So, and, and this is quite a good armor, right? It's got suppression, it's got life, it's got intelligence. Very good armor and will give us a lot of energy shield. But a lightning coil for physical mitigation is just so strong. And now we can um, we can add the normal stat that I'm I'm actually going to be I've just forgotten about it. Uh, I'm going to be doing this on my helmet instead of life. So we can remove the 69 life, nice. Uh, and then we add the prefix here for physical damage taken. There, so we're gonna add that at eight percent. You see our max hit goes up. And now, even though I lost life. I'm now at 1.17. Now, obviously, this is going to lower my chaos tank and elemental tank slightly because this is um, that only helps the physical tank, and I'm losing life. And losing life is bad. You do want as much life as possible still. But now we're at 1.17 Shaper Slam. Now, another important thing to do is you might get crit. So when you are designing a character to be face tanked, and if you do want to delve further into uh, POB and, and face tank characters, you should always do this. 100% chance to crit. Um, and we can actually fully tank a crit now. So that means that as long as I'm full HP on Shaper, he can't kill me. Then we would next have to look at balls and stuff like that. And we will look at that later. Now, in addition to this, we can have things like Taste of Hate, etc. So why is this good? And it's particularly popular on Pathfinders. So Pathfinder ends up being one of the tankiest classes in Path of Exile for a few reasons. Uh, Pathfinders can get 100% damage shift. That means that it does not take physical damage at all. So you can completely forego things like armor or physical damage reduction or endurance charges at all. They basically do nothing. And when that is the case, not only do you not have to care about armor, you can, you can run other RS than determination, which for a lot of other builds end up being very mandatory, but you can run Topaz, Taste of Hate, and a Ruby. And on a Pathfinder, obviously that gets so much flask effect from its ascendancy. So um, it gets even better because like I'm using this on my um, SRS character, but it might not be up all the time. And I, I am just getting 20% less lightning damage taken. But a Pathfinder can sometimes get as much as like 30 less damage taken on top of the fact that that's all the damage we're taking. So it's twice as effective. There's actually even more to this. Even when partially shifting, it makes armor that much more effective. If I'm only putting on a lightning coil and I have 15,000 armor, that 15,000 armor is now mitigating only 15 or 50% 50 of the damage taken. So it's twice as good as it was before. That's actually part of why I died on my last character because I dropped determination too early and I thought, I do have the equivalent of 26,000 armor. That's probably enough. It wasn't. Um, but uh, yeah, so lightning coil, very, very strong for that. And you will see it a lot. It's also easy to farm. And that means that you can double or single corrupt it and try to get a really good chest and then use the tainted fusing to six link it. So you'll see a lot of people running around with plus two AOE, plus two proj, plus two minion, etc. on your chest. And that's very big. Now there's actually more. So this is a, a different build than this is my corrupting fever build. And it doesn't even have spell suppression, which spell suppression is obviously very strong. It just halves the damage you take from any spell. That includes physical and chaos hits. It won't do anything to degens, but it's very, very big. So um, here I'm using something called the fourth vow. And this is armor also applies to chaos damage taken from hits. And this is incredibly strong with glorious vanity of Zabakwa, because what that does is 50% of elemental damage taken as chaos. Now, sadly, this wouldn't work with something like a lightning coil. Let's say you could wear two chests um, because you can't shift damage taken twice. We can shift the damage we do. So you could do cold to fire and fire to chaos. But sadly, we can't do physical damage taken as lightning and then half of that lightning damage taken as chaos. That doesn't work, sadly. And that is important to note because I died to that once when we didn't know this. Um, so why is this so strong? So there's a few reasons. Even just using Sabak when it's on is actually very strong. And I want to show that first, even without a fourth wow. Let's see, am I still Chaos Rest Cap? Yeah. So even without a test, let's um, explain how that works and why that is good first. So we're going to go to Enemy as a Boss. And I have uh, probably more things I could enable here for tank, but that's not super important right now. Um, so we're going to go look at a Shaper Ball. And we'll put it to a crit as well, just so we see the max damage. And we can see here, hits taken before death, 1.81. Now, if I take this off, it's 1.52. So why does this make it so much tankier? 
Well, the reason for that is first off, we are now taking half of the damage on 5% higher max stress, right? So instead of taking it on 75, we're taking half of the damage on 80. So this is good. But in addition to that, if we look at how the damage works here, um, it actually shifts. And what this move has is penetration. So I think it says if we hover over here, um, Cosmic Wounds increase the penetration to 40% on Uber. So the normal one is 20, I believe. Um, so that means that it is ignoring 20% of our resist. So effectively, we are actually taking half of the damage on 55 Cold Rests and half of the damage on 80 Chaos Rests. So this is really, really good. And uh, that's one of the ways to tank the double Aziri Flame Blast, the Shaper Balls, anything scary that has penetration. And um, another good thing with shifting to Elemental is there's a very scary mod. This is particularly scary with Expedition, which is Overwhelm 100% uh, physical. And uh, you can completely ignore that with um, whenever you have 100% uh, conversion. But now let's put the fourth vow back on and see how good it is. And what it does is it lets my chaos resist apply to armor. Now let's put my fourth vow back on and see what it does. So this makes armor applies to chaos damage taken from hits. So boom. And we can now see that I'm on 2.5. Look at the difference. 1.8 to 2.5. So that means that just with this, even without suppression, I can now face tank almost a full barrage. And this is if it's critting. If it's not critting, or if I'm crit immune, then it's 2.95. So thankfully, bosses don't have a, a lot of um, crit multiplier. Now let's add in suppression in addition to this to see how important layers are. So now I've written in a custom modifier, 100% chance to suppress, and now we can tank six. So it literally doubles our effectiveness because this is our spell. So now we could just AFK, they won't do anything. And um, I usually do have suppression with a fourth vial. This character isn't particularly tanky. It's not meant for high maps. I just figured, you know what? Slapping this on will make that I shouldn't have to worry about dying for most things on this build. And it's pretty solid against degens. Just very low damage. So, yeah. And uh, yeah, the reason this is so strong is because we do have a large amount of armor. And we can even get more. If I do put on my flasks, I go up to 49 armor and we are now at six hits before death. So we're probably like pretty close to like 90% damage reduction on a few different ones. And you can get 90% damage reduction in multiple ways, right? You can get 90% damage reduction from resist, then from other things like spell suppression and um, resist will stack. So you'll keep lowering it. Um, so you can't just, how do I say this? You can't just mitigate the damage 90% one time. You can mitigate it multiple times. So that's very strong. Now, obviously life is very strong as well, but this is how you see characters that have three or 4,000 life that are face tanking Ubers. So I just wanted to make a video and, and hopefully that helps. And you can see here our max hits and stuff like that. Uh, this is using Molten Shell, I believe. So when you really want to make max this, look that we are only at 3.7. Now, Molten Shell would be effective in this case because we were no matter what surviving the first hit, then Molten Shell would go on for the second one. So we'd be relatively safer. And this is what Molten Shell really excels at. And then we have Val Molten Shell for if we're going to take like damage over longer periods of time, etc. So keep these in mind whenever you're calculating your tank. This is why damage shifting is so strong. And uh, yeah, being able to avoid overwhelm, avoid penetration, etc. Incredibly good. And uh, hopefully you learned something today. So I hope you guys like this video. Sub if you liked the video, but more importantly, try to die less than I do.